Yo guys, what's up? It's Day the Obscanster here. So now that you have your Raspberry Pi, the next thing to do is set it up. Setting up your Raspberry Pi is easy and can be done in a few simple steps. To do this, you need to have an SD card formatted and ready to go, and you'll need to have a computer with a working internet connection. And that's pretty much it. So let's get it started. Open source gangster, hey! Alright, so after you've extracted both the Raspbian zip folder and the Win32 disk imager, what you want to do is go to the Win32 disk imager application and open it. After you open it, what you want to do is locate the Raspbian image that you extracted from the zip folder. So I'm going to browse to it. I'm right at the image. So I'm click open. And next, you want to make sure your SD card is connected to your computer and go to the device or the drive letter that's connected to you. Most likely, um, it'll probably be JRL or whatever. Okay. And after you have that, just go to write and hit yes, and it will write to your device. Once it's done writing to your device, you may disconnect your SD card and get ready for some Raspberry Pi action. Alright guys, so after the program has finished writing the image to your SD card, you can remove it and get ready to put it into your Raspberry Pi. So I have the SD card right here. And yeah, so let's get ready to boot up this Raspberry Pi. So some prerequisites that you may want to connect is first HDMI out so you have HDMI right there. Now of course you're free to use the video out as well if you don't have a HDMI monitor. So video out works just as well. Uh, SD card. We want to do a slide the SD card right here. Get a little closer. Right there into the SD card slot. So we're going to slide that right into there. Bam. There we go. And I also have connected a uh, wireless keyboard and mouse uh, adapter. Uh, you can also if you want to connect a wireless internet adapter however most likely it will not work right off the bat just because of the driver issues you're going to face with linux and everything else so i would just use the ethernet for now for internet but you will not need internet on first booting so but if you want to you can also connect your ethernet cable right there all right now finally once you have all your stuff you want to connect up the last thing you should connect is the power source and the reason why i say that should be the last thing you should connect is because the raspberry pi doesn't have an official on off switch like a normal computer does so, essentially, as soon as it's connected, it's going to turn on. So, moment of truth. Here we go. We're plugging this in. And just for reference, I'm using a standard USB cell phone charger. Nothing fancy. All right. Watch the magic happen. Plugging this in. And when you plug it in, oh, look at that. It's booting up. The Raspberry Pi is booting up. Raspbian is booting up. That's awesome. All right, I'm so excited because this is actually working. I was, didn't think this was going to work. All right, so when this is booting up, let me just show you. On your Raspberry Pi, uh, just to focus a little bit, you just see the following indicators. The red indicator indicates you have power, and above it, you may see, it may be labeled OK or ACT, and that just means it's reading from your SD card. So that's a good sign. All right, so if you do not get the screen right now, don't panic because um, it's probably a uh, simple fix. Check your SD card because a bad SD card can cause this not to boot. Also, check your HDMI source and your um, HDMI altogether. Make sure that's connected uh, as well. I'll put a little uh, blur in the description below because sometimes there's a little uh, edit that you have to add to the config file. All right, so now that we're at the setup screen, you have all your options to which you can configure. Um, we can go and change each one of them accordingly. I guess we can go to change local time or set, set time zone. And you can change any other settings that you want accordingly. But the important thing is to go down here. Now, let me just show you this. I think it's pretty cool that it has an overclock feature, configure overclocking. <laughs> I think it's really cool. And hopefully in the future, we can do a video on kind of overclocking this Raspberry Pi. Because I'm pretty sure you could probably maybe push it up to 1 gigahertz. So that would be exciting stuff to do. 1 gigahertz Raspberry Pi. But all right. So the important thing to do is go down here to boot behavior. Select that. And go to go right to desktop and hit yes. So that way, it's going to go right to your desktop on boot, and you don't have to go to the command line environment. I mean, unless you want to go to the command line environment, because some people enjoy command line. Um, and that's pretty much it. So all the stuff you can change and whatnot, but I'm good with that. All right, and once you have all your settings there, what we want to do is go down and go to finish. And finish, we'll go down there. So as you see at the bottom, it has... It has where it says Raspberry, and it has, um, you got the command line. So what you can do is actually, we can reboot it, or we can just go to starting up Raspberry. So let's go to reboot, see if that's going to work. sudo, type in sudo reboot. There we go. 
And we're just going to do, we're just going to reboot our Pi with the changes we just made. And there we have it. And look at that. We are right now within, inside of our Raspberry Pi. I'm going to zoom out so you can see the full image here. But look at that. We are inside the Raspberry Pi. So hopefully you made it to this point. Like I said, if you have not made it to this point, if, you ever have, if you're having issues with the display, check your SD card and um, check your power source because those are normally the most... Uh, those are normally the uh, culprit of this. And yeah, so pretty much here, we're in Raspberry Pi. It's running uh, really smooth. Uh, desktop 2. Let's go here. Let's go to... The performance is great on this. There's hardly any lag to it whatsoever right now. So that's really good. We have a browser up there, Midori. And we're running it in an LXDE um, desktop interface. So that's not bad either. So this pretty much extends the video for today. Setting up Raspberry Pi and getting it running. And like I said, stay tuned because we're going to do some more exciting stuff with this. And I mean, just some cool things we do with this Pi. So thanks for watching. This has been How to Stop Your Raspberry Pi. Hope you enjoyed it. Try it out and have fun with it. And tune in for another Galaxy video. Thanks.